So to the audience, wherever you are, welcome to Joomla Day USA, day two. And my name's Todd Woodward. I'm with, I'm one of the uh, one of the moderators for the day, and um, and uh, and with that said, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsors that have participated, especially our gold sponsor, Watchful, and the other sponsors that are very numerous. They've made this event happen and made it possible. The uh, Joomla Day USA team, uh, Laura Gordon and her staff. They have done an amazing job of putting this event together. And uh, so with that, I'm going to get out of the way and let Benjamin do his thing. And I just genuinely, I want to thank you ahead of time for taking time out of your weekend. Come share some knowledge. So with that said, I'm going to step aside. Yeah. Thank you, Todd. Um, I will share my screen. And not sure if, I guess it's not the first session, but you can double click on the screen. Um, to see it as f in full size, just for information. So um, in today's session, I would like to talk a bit about workflow plugins. Um, so the more experienced session in terms of how to create a workflow plugin. Um, before we start, how is the flow? How is the workflow plugin working? How is it connected with transitions? And hopefully you were in the, in the session before. Um, from Gary, he explained very good the, the basics and everything. And today, um, now we won't want to talk at um, a bit of developer, developing sides of plugins. So the most important thing um, of workflow plugins is to understand the flow. So there's a special group for plugins. You know, there are content plugins like um, um, encrypting the, the email or um, prepare the content. And there are system plugins. And since Joomla 4, there are workflow plugins. And workflow plugins are executed in general the moment a transition is executed. Um, but the magic we will see later um, is that, that they can interfere on, on different areas in, in your um, Joomla environment. But um, now we are looking on the very important basic functionality. So um, if you not know the workflow, um, you can currently, it's implemented for a com content for the article manager in Joomla. And it replaces um, in the first term, um, if you have activated it and if you have activated the plugins, the, um, the publishing status and the feature status. And um, instead of publishing an article or featuring an article or unfeature an article or unpublish an article, you run so, so named transitions. And the transition itself then triggers plugins, uh, which then can define what should happen. So um, for, for understanding and developer-wise, there are two important um, triggers. That's the on workflow before transition and on workflow after, and I see here I misspelled it, of course. Uh, okay, it does not like me. Oh, where's my PowerPoint? It's of course after transition. So um, these are the two elements and um, these are the two points where you can interfere into the workflow transition execution. So the first one is on workflow before transitions. Um, here the task is to prevent execution if you want. So for example, um, here you check data and um, here you get the unchanged data. So for example, um, if you if you make a plugin like before where you call some APIs, you could go into the on workflow before transition and make some checks. So um, 
let's say you have a shop um, and you want to check if the payment is done, then you would do it in the before transition. And if it's done, you say everything is okay. And if it's not done, you can um, interfere and, and prevent execution of the transition. You can also get unchanged data. So for example, um, here, if you talk about articles um, and, and you check the article, you get unchanged data before any workflow plugin change something like adding some images, cut images, and so on. And of course, you can prepare your own data. Um, for example, also in publishing, um, in the before transition, uh, we prepare the data and check what's the current status, if it's published or not. And afterwards, then we can um, change it. After transition now is the is the point where you execute your changes. So it's very important that you don't execute things before. Of course, you can do it, but uh, then you can get mixed results sometimes. So it's important to execute it after trans transition on this event. Um, there, for example, an article um, an article is published or is featured or an email is sent out or whatever. And of course, you can clean up. So for example, if you create some data, some files, um, some temporary, you can delete them or do whatever you want. So let's look into live session. Before you do that, I have a question about the uh, previous slide. Is the change data available at on workflow before transition so it can be compared with the change data? So um, the, the way it is, you get an ID or an array of IDs of the items um, which should be executed or which, which, which are executed. We will see in a second for it. So you get the IDs and then you can, in Joomla 4, boot the component which are um, linked to these IDs, load the item itself and do whatever you want. So you don't get the content itself, but you load can load them by, by yourself because you have all the IDs. And um, that's why it's important that you don't change things before because, because there could be other plugins who loads the content, for example, and they should not get the some updated data. They should get the original data. And on that step, then you have to, if you need the data to compare, for example, you have to save them temporarily in your class, for example. Um, and then ca you can use it afterwards. OK. Let me step away. OK. So for today, I prepared a little plugin. Um, so we will go two steps. Um, the first step, I will show you a very basic plugin with some little ideas behind um, and, and look to, to make it running or, or let it run then. And if you have time left, then we can go into deeper things. So for the first plugin, I used a lot of shortcuts um, and used um, functionality, um, yeah, not to the full extent, just for the time matters. But if we have time left, then we can look into existing plugins and look into the deeper things and more magic into it. So the idea um, we had, and thank you to Christiane, she, she had the idea, um, is um, let's assume we have a an, an, an sponsored post, for example, a sponsored article. And the idea is that we want to invoice that article somehow when it get, when it gets published. So we have an article, we prepare it, and probably you already know, so, so we get an upload, and someone is um, uh, changing the title, someone is proofreading it, someone adds some images, and then there's a moment where it's published. And now we want a plugin which generates a PDF um, with counting the numbers of, of words in this um, article, and then uh, writes a little PDF. Um, therefore, um, I prepared a little, um, yeah, I prepared a plugin and I did some uh, pre-steps um, to save some time today. So what I did is, um, it's a normal Joomla 4, uh, downloaded it uh, this morning. So it's it's a nightly build from, from this night. And what I did is now I went into the plugin folder and there we have the workflow folders and there I created a new folder billing. The billing is the one we want to have. Um, to have an, an um, PDF engine, I also installed here in the library folders um, TC PDF. It was a former library of Joomla 3.5, I guess, uh, which Joomla had included, but now it was removed. So I, I 
put it in, in our plugin here. And it's just a PDF engine, a PHP PDF engine where I can throw in um, EDUP HTML code to generate some PDF, what we were doing here, or I could um, write it manually a whole PDF. So it's a really nice um, library. I include it via Composer, but um, yeah, I think that's not so important here. We, we just have it here. Uh, what we also have um, is the billing plugin itself. And we will look in a second into it, of course, the XML. And we have some forms we are using. So, and of course, the, the, the language files. I also set up a Joomla 4. Let's, let's see if I'm logged out, not yet, okay. Here, um, I activated the workflow um, in the options. So, went into the options here. And integration up um, enable the workflow and um, I also installed the, the sample data to have some data to work on. So there are different um, areas we have to adjust, we have to integrate our plugin. So the idea is um, when we execute here a transition, then a PDF is generated and is sent by email to a certain user. Okay. So um, let's go into the workflow first. So the first thing is that we want to set up the transition for this workflow. And the, if we go here now in the workflow, the first thing we have to do, of course, is, is creating the XML. It's like a, a default plugin XML. Um, I recommend people who start with it just copy it from an, another one, probably from publishing, rename everything from publishing to billing and you should be really fine with it. Um, in our case, yeah, it just had the, the language files, the naming of the plugin, or the files of the plugin, the naming of the plugins. The next step you need is a PHP file, which is in our case, uh, the plugin class. Uh, the plugin class um, is like usual um, PLG, workflow billing, so the type and the name. Here again, we are billing type and it extends the CMS plugin here. Um, the CMS plugin um, is the base class for each plugin. Um, it it's, um, has some nice helper function. We also will tr uh, use the new event system. Um, it's a subscriber interface um, implements. Um, just a little question in the round. Is every, for everyone clear what the interface and, 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 and extends is, or should I? go very quickly in. Probably you, Todd, could tell me if someone speaks up. Go ahead and go okay. ahead and show. Okay. So um, this is the base class we use for our plugin. And the subscriber interface, um, before the, the idea was of, of plugins, um, you create your methods in your plugin, and then they will be triggered automatically from some um, dispatcher. With the subscriber interface, you can subscribe your events um, to the dispatcher and can prioritize them. And here, um, you see it, it's not much magic here. Um, well, but what we are doing is you can tell um, the subscriber plugin which method is responsible for what. Um, in our case, we, we didn't do anything special. We just uh, named them the, cell, the same on content prepare form, is on content prepare form, and so on. What we could do um, additionally is we could um, if over an array, and um, for example, three, and prioritize it. That means that um, from the subscriber, the higher the number is, the the, the um, earlier the plugin is executed. So for example, if you have an important um, system plugin which should be executed um, absolutely on the beginning, then you give a high number. And if you have a plugin which uh, it should be the last one, you give a low number and default is zero. And then you can go from uh, the, the, the given values are from plus three to minus three, but you can give higher or lower numbers. If you don't give any, um, well, you here, you just get, get it set to zero, which is the default, the normal one. So what we want to do is we want to enhance um, the transition um, form. We want to enhance the article form. And then we want to execute 
um, the the work the plugin in the transition. So what we are doing is we need, of course, uh, on coin and prepare form. So so um, to get parameters in your transition is you enhance the form of the transition itself. And um, in in this case here, you see it's a bit new. Um, it's it's a new new format of of having um, events. Still, the old one works. The old one would be that you get here um, a lot of, of, of parameters, context, and so on, and the form. And in our case, um, when we're using the new one, we get an, an event interface where we can call the argu arguments um, by, by, by calling a method. But you see, we see we get here the form and we get here the data. And so what we want to do is we have to check, are we in the transition or are we in the item? And I show you now what we did. Benjamin, yes. when you're back in uh, Visual Studio Code, could you zoom that screen so that the mm -hmm. audience can see it a little bit better? I'm not sure if I can. Let me see if I can. Um, that might, yeah, I know. And I understand that might be tough. It may be under... Yeah, there it is. Zoom in, yeah. zoom out under appearance. Yeah. There. Hello? Yeah, that's probably, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you very much. OK. So what I want to do is now, um, you know, we have here the workflows. We have the transition. And now we want to create a new transition, um, which triggers the billing. So um, the final result will be that we have here a billing transition. And we have billing actions. And uh, that's a little thing. Um, we don't want notification. They are by default on. So we have billing actions where we can say, OK, we want to send some billing data. We, we want to send as, as final um, result uh, 20 cents per, per word. And uh, we can define who gets, uh, uh, let's see here. This person gets the email. So what we we want to do is we want to en enhance the transition formula to get this form. And now I show you how this happens. So the important thing is that uh, we have on con on content prepare form, and later on we will see we also will enhance the article form. So we have to check here in which form we are. And uh, luckily we get a context from the form, and we know. Um, Com workflow transition is for the transition form, and else we have another form. And if you're wondering um, if you would go here for every form on Joomla, the answer is yes. Um, so we could here make an else if um, and and check if we are in the article form later on. But uh, we don't do it. We, we have a support functionality and support check, which I will show you later too. So the first thing first, we have here the enhanced transition form. And um, you will see that the end transition form um, is just here to override the end enhanced trans workflow transition form. And the thing is, this method is not here in this class. And here is the big benefit for, for workflow plugins. We have here trades. Um, if you don't know what trades are, there are some something like extend. But uh, extend has this advantage that you only can extend one class, and with traits you can use several classes. So there is a workflow plugin trait, uh, which gives a lot of helper functionality to support you uh, in creating your plugin. And in our case, for example, we have here a methods enhanced workflow transition form, because uh, when we build the workflow, we decide, hey, probably everyone will enhance the transition form to get his or her parameter here somehow. And it would be useless if everyone has to do the same, right? So what we did is we, we create a very default way to enhance this form. And the idea is that we that you build in or that you deliver just an action XML, which includes all the form fields, and they will be loaded automatically. So if we check here again um, in our workflow, we have here a folder action. Uh, where we implement all the fields we want to have there. So we have the, if it's active or inactive with the radio button, we have a number field to set up a price for the word count, and we have the receiver field which uh, where you can select users from the user list. 
And just by having that um, action XML in, in, in this in this specific folder and calling in, in our uh, plugin the enhanced transition form or the enhanced workflow transition form, they are there. So you don't have to load any form or stuff like that. You just uh, deliver the, the XML and that's it. And the, in that moment, we have here the fields. Um, so, you know, so set it up. Say we want to send a billing when this is executed. We want uh, to calculate the prices on, on that level. And we want to send it to Benjamin Trankler to this email. Um, yeah, we, we could also have some publishing state change or something like that, but we, we disable all the other things because it should be an independent billing transition. And um, yeah, we let it also st the standard for the permission. So as we are super user anyway, we don't need any permissions to execute it. And we say, okay, it could be executed at any time, um, which is fine too. And it's, of course, it should be published. So we save it. So we have now here the billing um, transition, which can be already executed on certain articles. So we could click here and have here the billing um, transition. The question is now, what should happen if we execute it? And that's what we did not um, set up yet. And the idea is uh, that we build an, an, an PDF and send it to the one we selected in the transition. And the PDF itself should, of course, have some information. So the, our idea here is now um, that we have here in the content tab, our own tab, billing. And here we can, you, uh, we can select the, the, the person we will charge for, um, for the price. In our case, it's a content author. And the, the thing is, um, you know, here we were in the content prepare form. And, and the good thing is um, we can use the same method. And instead of loading the enhanced transition form, we, en we load the enhanced item form. So here, um, um, this is loaded um, if it's not a transition form. And here, th that's the method we had before where we can check if the plugin is supported. Um, of course, you could, you could hard code um, the information in, in your plugin and say, okay, I just, um, um, I just support one form, but probably in the future, um, there's the magic in where you can say, where you can ask the component, hey, component, do you support me? So it's the other way around. And therefore we have this is supported method implemented where we have some magic and also um probably you rem if you were in gary's um session you saw that he had some allow list and disallow lists uh where the plugin itself also can enable and disable for certain um components uh, which is also very helpful so if you do this use this gener generic way um it's configurable when the plugin is executable or not and at the end we just load um, the form field and again it's here an xml where we have this billing user um, information and here we have the structure of the tabbing and uh, the, the name of the field so let, let's look very quickly into the is supported because um, although I, I told you hey you should make it very um, flexible um, Um, yep, um, I didn't do it, to be honest. Um, but I will show you later, if you have time left, how to do it. So what we do here is um, we just check if, if we are in the correct form. And we then load the component here and check if the component supports the interface and if the workflow is activated. Because otherwise, if the workflow is de deactivated, it would be strange if our parameter is there and loaded. So. In our case, workflow is activated, com content supports the workflow, and we are in the article view. So we load this um, XML I showed you before. And um, therefore, we have here this billing option where we can select the, the author. The idea here is, and that, that would be for future enhancement, 
that you can use the custom fields for, for author information where you can put in payment data, uh, addresses, and, and additional information for the, for the PDF. And in our case, we will just go for the email address and for the name because that's, that's already there. So now, now we have our form um, enhanced. So we have the transition created. Now we select here the content author, save it to. And um, so if we execute a billing here on the typography, um, then a billing is created for this author and it's sent to the Benjamin account because um, he's the one who pays the bill or, or, or gets, gets the money. It depends a bit what, what you want to do. So, and the last step now is the execution itself, of course. So what happens now if we select here billing? And therefore, we again, um, as you remember from, from the sheet probably, we have the on workflow before transition and on, on workflow after. In our case, uh, we skip the on before because we don't need any data. Uh, we just want to, to have the data um, when the transition is executed. And here you see the difference uh, um, compared to the on content um, prepare form. On content prepare form use the old um, event system. So you have to use numeric um, keys to get the, the parameters. And the new one um, has real names to get the parameters from, from the given um, event. And again, we, we have to check if it's supported. Um, if it's enabled, because um, the moment it could be that someone disabled it already. And what we can then do is here, we have the transition given um, by the event, and then we can check our parameters. In our case, they are the billing active, billing price, and the billing receivers. And that exa are exactly the parameters we had defined in the transition before. So they are given to us if they are set. And now we, we do exactly what you want to do. We, we check, hey, are you active? Do you have a price um, above zero? So um, it, it, it's up to you if you want to have this check. But uh, yeah, it makes sense to have at least um, charge them for one cent. And if there is a receiver, who should get the email. And if one of these uh, criteria are not met, then we, we skip them here and do nothing. Otherwise, now we are working um, with the PDF. So um, here we had this um, composer auto loader where the TC PDF is, is integrated. And um, what we do first is we boot the component. And the good thing about Joomla 4 is that you can boot the component in their own context. So in Joomla 3, it was always a struggle to get models or get tables or get something like that. And here, it's very easy if you have the component name, which we got um, from, from the event, here with the extension name, you can just boot it and you have an, an instance of the component which you can use. In our case, um, we get the model name for the current context. So that was implemented also with the workflow. Um, as a, with a comp if a component has several models, you of course need a correct model and the component can tell you, hey, based on the article, um, view you the, the current model would be articles, for example, or article, depending what you are, have. And what we are doing now, we, we ask the component, hey, just give me the model with the certain name. In our case, it's article. And here now, that's the, the, the area, um, I guess, which, which was targeting um, the question for. Um, we get the, the, the keys from the event um, for the articles. In our case, because we know we are now in the article area, uh, we get the keys of the entries and can just load them by the article, by, by the model, like get item, and then we have the article. The article itself has, in best case, our billing user um, saved, which is um, the one we select in the article itself. If not, um, it makes no sense to, to charge something. Um, if, if it's there, then we load the user. And now we count how many words are um, in the article. So we just split it, split it up by, by um, spaces and count the words just as a demo. Um, yeah. And now 
Um, that's some TCPDF. Um, so what we do now is we, we start a TCPDF instance um, at, at a new page. That's important for them. And now we use a little bit of, of the, the, the power of, of from plugins. Um, as you probably know, since a few years, plugins can also have templates. And what um, I did is I prepared a default PHP. And you can see it here. It's in the template folder of the plugin. We are just put in some very rough, um, yeah, it's not a real invoice style, but it's something like that. So we put in a little uh, image from the image folder. We put in some dates. Um, we will put in an address. Uh, we put in the the user name and the email who, who is charged. And um, add here the price where we calculate um, the, num the number of words with the price and, and outputs it just for demo purposes. And the whole content um, is now loaded into, into the TC PDF and writes to HTML. And the benefit of doing it uh, in such a way is that you can overwrite with a template um, now the, the, billing, um, the billing layout and, and put in your own layout. And what we want to do now is we want to save the invoice temporarily in the temp folder, for example. Um, then and before we, we also have to check if there's already an invoice and delete it. And then we generate the, the whole PDF. And then we loop through the receivers. And uh, for each user which is there, we send an email out um, with a little uh, subject body. It's, it's nothing much, it's just invoice and see attachment. And there we um, set the invoice as attachment. And at the end, we delete the invoice again. So to sum up the whole thing, what we did, so we enhanced the transition um, view, the, the, the transition form, and um, to set up our base transition and say, okay, this is the billing. Um, who should get get the email? Um, is it activated? And what's the price if we execute that one? Then we enhanced the article view and uh, defined um, who will receive the in or who will be charged for. And then, um, last but not least, we implement the execution here, where we um, first check if, if it's supported, if every um, data are filled out. Um, we get the model, we get the items, in this case, the articles. And then for, for each receiver, um, we should generate a PDF and send out the email. And at the end, um, let's try this one. So we are here, uh, we go for the Billing now, we send out the, the state, or we, we, we execute the, the transition. And now let's see the email, which is invoice here. And here we got now the email. As you can see, it's, it's sent uh, currently uh, one, one second ago. And if you open it, we have a PDF with our content author, with our um, email, we have here the the address, and you see our article has 260 words for uh, 20 cent, I guess, and then this would be the total price. And now we could start enhancing the whole process um, and make a better PDF, um, give, giving more information, using custom fields on, on user. So for example, that, that we load here the custom fields of from the author. Uh, or from from the one who gets gets the information, we could add here an increasing number for the invoice number, and so on. But I hope um, you saw in a very basic view how you can very quickly um, create a plugin to do whatever you want. So as you can see, we we could here in our um, in our after event we could do whatever we want. Yes. So far, any questions? I don't see any questions in the pod at the moment, but that shouldn't stop folks from asking. Um, it's a, it's an, this was, I mean, this dovetails nicely. I was, I was the, I was the moderator for the, for a previous session with, um, with Gary Barclay. He also did a presentation using workflows. And this dove, these two dovetail nicely to, one, to each other. So this presentation 
oh man, you know, it's really nice to see from start to finish how it all works. That's what's really cool about this. Um, and then uh, the other presentation was showing a little bit of um, automation also, but it was, yeah, a little bit of external automation. Uh, so if you want to watch that, these sessions will be recorded for your viewing pleasure later on. And I mean, I can't, I can't recommend this one enough to everybody because I think here's the thing I think about Joomla 4, this particular feature workflows, this is going to be such a big deal to a lot of my clients and I'm sure a lot of your clients as you're developing sites for them, especially the way that it's been implemented and the way that you've just shown with the plugin. That's, oh, that's really, that's nice. Yeah. So if there are no questions, I could show and explain a bit the core plugins, the publishing plugin. Oh, here we go. Um, I have a question, but it's okay. It's short. A yeah. uh, great example that you've you, that you've shown in this presentation is it going to be available for download? Uh, yeah, I can can submit it okay. somehow. All right, all right. Um, that's yeah. I mean, there haven't been tons of questions because you know everything's been laid out and makes sense. So, um, so show what you want to show, and I'll yeah. get out of the way. Okay, so let's look into the publishing plugin and um, probably in the um, in the feature plugin, but they are very similar. Um, but um, for for the publishing and the and the and feature plugin, we had a lot of challenging to solve because Joomla was very stubborn. And um, yeah, I, I think it was um, Harold and myself, and he did an awesome lot of work. Um, um, also concept-wise, to get it done. As you can see, uh, the plugin itself is is much bigger uh, because we really, really used uh, the Joomla power um, we could use here. Um, the base, the basics are the same, of course. You have the class. You, you, you're using the trait, but in our case now we're really using the trait, and that's why I'm opening here in a second tab and um, to have it later on. Um, we also use some support, uh, some some support um, yeah, functionality. For example, it's called support functionality, where you can define what is your plugin doing. So the first plugin we saw before was more like the plugin itself decides, hey, I want to be executed or I want to be available for this extension. Here's the other way around. Um, this plugin here does not say something. It just says, hey, I'm here. And if an extension want to use me, it can be used. And therefore, we need here um, this little, let's say, key um, element um, to, to, to define when or when it should be used. So, and as you can also see, we have a lot more subscribed events. Um, what we have as challenge is we have in the, and let me show it live here. So the first challenge was, uh, we have to enhance here the whole filter, for example, um, to, to get uh, different uh, filters in. We also have to extend the action bar. And as you know, probably um, in Joomla, we have this publish, unpublish, feature, unfeature thing, but we need to have our own um, transitions there. And it seems someone broke here the publish, unpublishing stuff, because normally it should not be there when the plugin is there. But yeah, this can be fixed and very easily. Um, also, uh, very challenging was what happens um, um, if you if you select several items and and want to execute them. Um, so we need a way to go into this screen here and do things. And this is the on on after display. Um, we also have to prevent several things. So for example. And it should not be possible, and let's check if someone broke it. Um, it should not be poss possible to unpublish features. Exactly, that's good. And unpublishing an article when the workflow is activated and the feature uh, and, the, and the state plugin is also um, activated, because um, then it should only happen over transitions. Um, and same for saving. Uh, we have to check save um, if if it's um if if the 
someone tries to trick the the workflow for example and and, and injecting um, hidden fields or stuff like that so we check if there really is no change um in in the in the in our case here in the publishing status and the default one we have the content prepare form where we prepare the form again it will be the same as before i will show you and we have all the challenges of versioning um, the versioning currently does not really work um, with the with the workflow um, at least for the workflow um, status because the challenge is um, it could be that you are allowed to change a status that's okay but you are not allowed to change back but if you would recover the version then it would be changed back which is a bit of a conflict and currently it, it's in my opinion it's, it's solved because it's are taken out from the versioning but um, yeah there's a big discussion if we should have it solved somewhere else or stuff like that yeah and then we have to before to after transition and um, a check if the functionality is used so let's check first the prepare it's the same as before if we are in the transition view we load the enhanced transition form otherwise we load the item form uh, transition form is um, here again like before we load the parent call but we also um, have to set um, some fields for this for this xml um, in, in our case where we are what what the workflow is and this leads then in our case oh, wrong link this leads then here to the transition action um, to the status here. So the way we implement it here is that um, you can use your own component and just allow this plugin to work with your component and then your status are used. So it's not, um, here we only have um, published, unpublished, archived and trash because we are on com content. But if you would be on a, on a different component, for example, a shop, the shop can deliver their own um, status, their own, own publishing states and it's completely independent from com content itself. Um, same for item forms. Um, there, what we are doing in the in the article itself, let me show you that is if the plugin is activated, then you can't select the, the publishing status here as a drop down. You just uh, get the current status. And same for the featured one. So if you decide in your um, in your environment you to not use um, the publishing status, then you can use it like in Joomla 3. So that's what we are doing here. We replace just the field. And um, here is the magic for, for the whole list um, where we remove via JavaScript um, the different status uh, when it works. So we have to check probably someone um, changed some IDs or something like that. Okay, now let's let's check what happens if we execute this transition. So, of course, first we, we check um, if it's supported like before. And if we go here in the supported list, um, here, you see we, we have all of this um, allowed and forbidden check. Uh, we have an extension check. And we also check um, if the current component um, has a table and has the field published. Um, for example, and if the method itself has a publish method. So um, what we like to use is, of course, we want to use the components publishing method. We want to use the components publishing field. So some components has not published, but has state. And there's a little magic in Joomla in the, in the table. If you make this call, it automatically gets converted to state if the table is correct set up. Anyway, go. let's go back to the... Um, to, the, to the execution. Here we are. So, and now we get the publishing value. Um, That's the value which is defined in the transition, as you can see. Um, we, we, of course, have only to execute if there is, is a value in. Um, otherwise, it's on not used. So we could stick it. And um, now, as it says the comment, it's now a bit tricky. The, the problem or the, the challenge here is that we want to like to use the publishing method um, on, on the whole thing. But um, the, the normal 
use uh, an, an trigger on content before change state. So if you want to publish something, um, this trigger is used so you could add your own plugins on them. And the, the thing is, in our plugin itself, we disabled this function, as you can, can saw. Um, here, we disabled um, the, the publishing. So, okay, it's published. So we disabled the unpublishing and the publishing um, method, methods. So if you would use the own internal publishing thing, then it would be disabled too. So what we, we do here, um, it's a bit, yeah, yeah, I don't want to say dirty, but it's, it's a little bit of magic here. What we do is um, we whitelist or we, we allow in, in our case now, hey, you can publish for a short moment um, till the, for this execution, you can publish and unpublish things. And therefore, we do it and repair our publishing method and, and say, okay, it's allowed to do it now. And in the after transition, where the real magic should happen, then we check, hey, um, so we, we get here the whole thing and we just publish the, the, the elements. And as I said before, here we have the on content before change. And what we did is, um, if nothing is allowed, we just throw an exception. So we don't allow um, changing the state. But um, if we have whitelisted before, that's the whitelisting um, we saw, then we say, okay, it's fine for the moment. And the same here for, for saving. In saving, we, we um, load the article. And um, if publishing is set, so someone tries to trigger us and send some new publishing um, values, then we throw also an exception and, and interrupt the saving process um, to do things or to, to don't allow um, to change the state outside of the workflow. And the last thing I, I um, told before is, um, yes, also trigger. You see, we, we are very trigger heaven and, and trigger and based. And what we also do, we remove the publishing from the versioning and table and say, um, and that's here the, the very thing, we say, okay, ignore please the publishing field in versioning. Yeah, and yeah, that, that's some preparation. And here also it removes the, ver the, the publishing data from the versioning table. And supported, um, here you can see, check allowed um, for forbidden lists. It's, it's also not here. But this is in, um, already defined in a trade. And I would like to go through the trade here. So you see a lot of things is already there. So for example, the transition form um, enhancement is automatically working if you have this action XML. Um, there is a workflow loader, uh, which loads the workflow, the whole workflow, um, if it's there. Um, there is a check, um, is supported which you um, should overwrite, and then you can write your own magic in. And it also um, checks the forbidden and the allowed list. And if you didn't saw it in the, in the previous um, session from, from Gary, um, the list is looks like that. So we go in the workflow plugin uh, in publishing. And here you can define which extension should be a low or in which extension you, you don't want to have the, the, the um, plugin executed. In our case, as only articles or com content supports the, the workflow, um, it's a very short list. Yeah, and that here you see our extension support is a bit bigger. So we, we have not only check for the interface, um, we also check if the um, functionality is supported and the uh, extension itself tells you then, hey, uh, where is it? Yeah, yeah. The extension itself tells you, hey, I would like to allow to execute something which um, has cost, which stains the cost date. And last but not least, if you very quickly look into the notification, um, I skip about um, over the things we, we already know. But the, you see here we have only a small thing. We will prepare the form for the uh, transition. We don't have to prepare the form for the article because here we only send an email out. 
And you see, we only go for the after transition. And here, what we are doing is, depending on the emails, we use the Joomla email system. So we load messages, we load the workflow, and then we create a message um, at the end to send out emails with the messages. So as you can see, you, you, you can do anything in, in this on after workflow transition um, call, on workflow after transition call. Yeah, that was a very quick overview um, about how workflow is itself working. So as you can see, it's there's not much. You just have to find the correct trigger point. And and my recommendation, as you as as before said, is hey, let's look into the core plugins, and um, yeah, then you can copy paste uh, the most things and just adjust it to your needs. OK. Are there any questions or anything? Come on, play nice with me. I don't see anything in the Q&A pod, but the chat has been on fire with a lot of great compliments because this has been a fantastic presentation. It makes sense. So <laughs> I actually you know? pre prepared a presentation slide for questions. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ball odds fails. The final yeah. slide. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> and if not, uh, if you have any questions, just uh, write me an email or uh, you find me on Clip or yeah, Google me, something like that. That's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, and by the way, have fun. Ooh, look at that going all inception. Yeah. <laughs> Matrix. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, once again, I want to I want to thank Benjamin for taking uh, time out of his weekend to hang out with us and show right, us yeah. this. This is because I mean, I, I like I've said, I think this is a really great part of Jumbo Four, the ability to do workflows and and just what workflows can be used for um, on your site. That's really amazing. Um, and then, second of all, thank I, the sponsors have been very good to us, and I want to thank Watchful among others for for uh, helping us put this on. Uh, Laura's staff, uh, Laura Gordon, and and her team have all been really really on top of stuff, and um, and I want to thank the audience because. It's nice of you to spend your Saturday, spend your, you know, spend your time with us and uh, learn new things because, you know, that's how we push the project forward. So uh, once again, I did both sessions, so I'm now an expert. Oh, no. But I'm, I mean, you know, I've, I've started to, to play with Joomla 4 and try and figure out how it's going to work for our clients. Um, and you know, but you're talking to somebody who's had clients that are still out there with you know old versions of Joomla, hand crank 2.5, and uh, that's always loads of fun. It's like, hey, or or no, we did have a 1.5. We had a 1.5 installation that we had to update, and uh, so um, probably but I a reason to update. Yeah, 1.5. Hey, here's your reason to update. You know, but. <laughs> Not much else to say. <laughs> Just sit there. Oh, and put up the question slide. Questions? Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to eventually migrating some of our client sites if we can adequately, you know, if we can give them enough of a compelling reason to do so. And I think there are some very compelling reasons in this particular version coming up. So I'm looking very forward to its release. Uh, are there any questions out there from anybody? I don't see any in the Q&A pod. Um, the chat, as I said, has been very, very active, which is really great. And, um, you know, in the, we've got a little bit of time remaining, not much, about six minutes or so. Um, so I do want to recommend a couple of things that are part of Joomla Day USA. One, if you get the chance, uh, take advantage of the networking feature. It's really kind of interesting. You click on it, you wait, somebody pops up at random, depending upon who is participating at that time, and you get five minutes with them. It's speed dating. 
it's like speed dating, you know, and it's a nice chance to meet somebody that you may not have ever met before. You might get lucky and meet somebody that you know. And so that's that makes it very interesting. Um, on top of that, uh, well, of course, we've got tons of sessions. Um, the expo, take advantage of going to the individual sponsor booths. They've got a lot of interesting information at those booths as well. Take advantage of it. And then we've got a good list of sponsors in the expo hall. So, uh, you know, I can't, that's about all I want to say. I don't know um, if there's anything else you want to add, Benjamin, uh, or if anybody else. I'm looking in the chat pod to see if anybody wants to. Yeah, Benjamin, I'm sure, will backport to Joomla 1. Yes. <laughs> I will show. Yeah, we, we have a coding session with Phil, and I will show him, and he will do it. So please, <laughs> you know his email, contact him. <laughs> Next two weeks, he's finished. So he's nearly That's done. That's right. Somebody thinks they're going to throw you under the bus? Well, no. <laughs> Let's see who gets thrown under the bus. It was a really good session. I really appreciate it, Benjamin. Thank you very much. And good. Thank you for putting up your um... – oh, he's he's posted in the chat the link to the file. I know that was a question that was asked earlier. And there you go. Link to the plugin. Boom shakalaka. So there you go. Um, and if there's nothing else, uh, I want to thank you again. I want to thank the audience again and, uh, and everybody have a wonderful, have a wonderful day here <clears throat> at Joomla Day USA. See you later. All right. Well, I will see you all later. Thank you.